I'll come back to Final Fantasy. So it's time to delve into the Sunken Shrine. You, you have Oxyale. Don't you mean the Oxyale? You're the ones we have been waiting for. Please yeah. save the mermaid. You are God, the God one. They used to twist the people. She was a ghost because she actually drowned in the barrel. Now you have to feel uh, sorry. Feel sorry, Shiro. Uh, uh, no, she had like, she had had like four lines Shut of up. dialogue. No. I was literally talking Stop to a ghost. Stop wimps first in the barrel, without the oxygen. Yes, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, you forgot to put the oxygen and you all drowned. <laughs> oh god damn it, with that. Please prepare a new, a new character sheet. Nah, yeah, it didn't work. Tales of Graces did the whole you've been talking to a ghost this whole time thing better. So, whatever. Anyway, regardless, uh, we, this is the shrunken shrine. Again, again, we're operating on SpongeBob logic for our barrel can float underwater like there's a surface. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, That's now cool. all, all enemies are themed in terms of water, so the good news is that, is that you can use your thunder spells to massacre the entire population. Alright, I'll handle this. Thankfully, I also, also found some trinkets off screen to equip all of you. Um, this is also the point of the game where you started to collect a couple of weapons and protections <clears throat> Sorry, that uh, you don't, ne don't necessarily have to equip, uh, but if you use as an item, uh, they can be used infinitely, and they cast a particular spell, even from people who cannot cast a spell, like Glyphs, for example. So, for example, there is a stat that, that casts uh, Hilara, you know, the, spell that, the healing spell that heals the entire party for moderate death, for moderate results, uh, and that can be casted by anyone. The the Trade-off is that it's connected to your magic stats, so someone like Gwibs, once again, will will be able to do that. But the results Why are you will be, singling me out? But the results will be poor. The good news is that some of the items allow you to cast for buffs, like in Vizira. Um, meaning that characters with low magic stack, again, like Dweebs, can be perfect for this. <laughs> as basically well, he's item a monk, fodder, so he's supposed but to. At, the at the beginning of the match, they can just, you know, dump this item to buff the party, so your white mage can do something, it's a okay. multitask. Okay, Tio, when I do a game that involves renaming characters, I'm gonna give you the lamest character. <laughs> Anyway, I'd actually like to bring the something up about the original NES version of this game. Uh, um. Like I said before, Final Fantasy 1 was the first game ever to have a party in a JRPG because uh, the games made by uh, Enix and Neon Falcon didn't have. They were just uh, one uh, protagonist and that was it. So this game was actually the one that introduced the whole concept of a party that would later become a staple of the genre. Um, and part of why this game was such a big success when it came out and saved Squaresoft from bankruptcy. Aside from other reasons, but yeah, that was one of them. Um, uh, however, the original NES version had um, issues. Basically, a lot. basically, when Ito Water was is wet. basically when Ito was designing the game, he didn't account for the fact that maybe at some points. Okay, let me put it like this: uh, Dwebs, you know how when you're playing a Dragon Quest game or a Persona game. Uh, and and sometimes you you might tell two two party members to attack the same enemy because that enemy is particularly tough. However, right. however, if if one of those two characters you told to attack that enemy manages to kill that enemy before uh, the, the second one has uh, a chance to act, obviously that second character that uh, will now change his attack to, to towards another enemy, right? Not in Final Fantasy 1 for the NES, because Hito, when he designed this game, he didn't account for the fact that maybe there would be situations where a character would be targeting an enemy that the other character just already killed before he got a chance to. As a result, if, if, if that happens in the, in the original NES version of this game, that, ca that second character will basically attack the air and you'll waste a turn. Oh. This also wasn't fixed for Final Fantasy 2, and only later releases actually you know, implemented that. Yeah, that's one of the big reasons why the NES version should you should uh, should only be played for for by newcomers for cu for curiosity. curiosity sake, uh, yeah, not really. a relic of the past. Uh, um, not just that, because uh, the, the, like I mentioned, it was chock full of glitches. Uh, uh, critical hits were almost non-existent. Uh, there was a bug regarding intelligence stats. Uh, there was an invisible woman in Corneria. Um, 
the, the so mentioned Peninsula of Power level, for example, and a lot of spells did not work at all, including, for example, the ones that inflicted, uh, you know, debuffs, uh, for example. Um, so, of mm -hmm. course, uh, like, at, the, at that point, you might as well just stick to a play release. If not this PSP one, at least stick to the PlayStation one or the GBA one. The GBA one in terms of content, the PS one for more stability and a better soundtrack. So, Tio. Yeah. I assume that this upgrade that we got was optional. What? With what upgrade? The upgrade we got last part. Oh, the, the, yeah, the, the class change, yes. You can potentially, if you want, to finish the game entirely with your original classes. The game doesn't judge you about that, and it's doable. A bit harder, but doable. But so, uh, it, it's entirely your choice to do or not. So my main question is, what do you consider the actual true and canon looks for them by the end of it? Like, you know... The upgraded version, like I said, this is treated like a D&D session, and the the growth and even potential change look of your character is an integral part of that as well. So, uh, considering this is also tied to the character of Bahamut, which also in the first couple of editions of D&D was very important, uh, you know, um, yeah, I do believe it is, uh, you know, it might as well be considered, uh, you know, part of the canon. But then again, uh, it, the, again like I mentioned, for, for the first Final Fantasy, the continuity is loose, for lack of a better term. Not to mention to Jova. It, now that I think about it, in Dissidia, the Warrior of Light also has his upgraded look. Yeah, I was literally about, about to say well. that. Yes, exactly. Good job. Uh, yeah, so so yeah. As far as Square is concerned, yeah, the knight is supposed, uh, the warrior of light is supposed to have the knight armor, as showed yeah, by the by the Cydia and World of Final Fantasy. So this was also this was also sort of a tradition because for the NES of Final Fantasy II, Firion, the protagonist, or Frionel, as it was called in the Japanese version, has the same identical sprite as the warrior of this game. So they wanted, uh, probably because of laziness, and I agree, wanted to, they just wanted to recycle the sprite, but uh, they also wanted to indicate protagon, protag syndrome. The reason why it's not like that for free is because the, the starting class is the Onion Knight, which was a new one completely introduced to be the basic uh, um, you know, class, uh, the jack of all trades that can do a bit of everything in the beginning, but it's best if you switch I, immediately. Um... I forgot too. Was the Onion Knight even in five? I don't f think it no, was. No, I, I don't think the Onion Knight ever. It, it was returned. introduced. Uh, it, the only other major appearance it was as as a class uh, was being introduced uh, in the Warrior of the Lions version of, ta of, of Tactics. Uh. Yeah, yeah. So basically, but, even, but as far as main series, not, and even, and even then, it's not even a great class to be honest. Uh, but main series wise, it never returned. Like even no. the, even the Bravely Default games don't don't have that class. So, well, Bravely Default wants to have its own set of class which are similar to these one, but just with different names. Well, most of the classes in Bravely Default are just the exact same ones we all expect. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. have the same they have the same functions, but they have different names and potential appearances. Well, so. not necessarily. I mean, there's White Mage, there's Black Mage, so they do have the same names still for the classic ones. Mm. Yes, Jova? Um, how useful are the knight's new spells that he has? Serviceable. Again, it's like, it's, it's the same, are the same, they're the same as the basic one for the white mage, meaning that, uh, um, you can cast on basic buff, basic buffs uh, and, uh, um, minor healing spells. The, the trade-off is that, uh, Right away, guys, why don't I try to save us? <laughs> Like I mentioned, the trade-off is uh, there. You go. Like the trade-off is that uh, the MP growth uh, of of the knight starts happening the moment you get upgraded. So if you were already on a high level when the upgrade happens, uh, you know you will have a bit of a harder time building sufficient MP to have decent casting material. You're welcome, yeah, guys. By the way. <laughs> Well, we all ran together that last time. It's sort of an efficient strategy. See if we can run away or get some XP out of the job. We all exactly. know that you can pretty much cast the area over environment spells, mm -hmm. which pretty much take them all out in one fell swoop. 
Exactly. They, I'm the strongest, but I can only usually take on one of them. Also, the as, you can, as, you, as you have seen through battles, and particularly like this, the odds are always stacked against you, because sometimes you get hordes of nine enemy, where your party is, you know, four maximum. So, the, the trade-off is that you don't particularly, we don't find hordes that are as powerful as you, ideally. You know, <laughs> so they they actually compensate quantity with a scarcer quality. So the name of the game is be as leveled up as possible in preparation for the. Well, yeah, gr well, again, that's... grind as much grind as much as you can. Again, core component of any RPG. A good RPG will manage to make you the process of grinding. You know, fun enough for you to actually go out of your way to do it. Uh, you know, without even you know. Uh, under, realizing that you are doing it. It's a, or, or, or personally, I prefer the way a game like Chrono Trigger or Nino Kuni 2 do it in the, in the sense that the game paces itself in a way that it makes it so that you never have, as long as you're, as long as you're not running away from battles all the time or anything like that, as long as you just progress normally and fight the enemies as they come to you, you will get the enough XP and levels that you need. So. Uh, it, it, like uh, 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 I think uh, it, it works even better in that regard. If uh, you can grind, if you want to, of course, but the game, but the game's campaign is designed to pace itself in a way that as long as the as long as the player is fighting the enemies as they come to him, he will get enough XP. This is also one of our, again one of the major reason why I can't stand the Thirteen Trilogy as a whole. Yeah. No matter how hard you grind. No matter how hard you maxed out, you will always feel like you're a step back. Okay? Well, there's a level cap because of so. that arbitrary glass ceiling. Even, that they even put at for the each end, the end game where your level cap is raised to the max, uh, and you ma do manage to max out all oh, done. If the light of the sea is lost, you will turn to sea foam, vanishing forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone read that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I read yes, the I read that book too. Yeah. The little mermaid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, excuse me, I want to talk. Oh, my prayers have been answered. Yes, I, I, lo I, 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 I love how the I love how the mermaid sprite in this game uh, doesn't even doesn't even look like they they're covering their boobs. That their their boobs seem to be like completely. Uh, well, our friend went to see the world oh, above and so, then returned. So I wonder what she's doing right now. I do hope she's alright. Basically, this is the other your other hint for a side for that side stuff that we've seen. <coughs> the dancer of a village above is a mermaid that uh, has turned into a human. That explains her love of legs. Anyway, Pedro, so they're going for the classic mermaid thing, mm -hmm. where they pretty much go bare to you know, you, you know what this means, too? Um, if this game gets ported to other systems, they'll most likely change the sprite to accommodate, like they did for uh, a, a remastered. Not, it's literally okay. a couple of well, pixels, they, they I did, guess. It's not they, even that I don't know, Teo. They did it for 8 remastered with Sylph. Like I so. said, they, they just said, like I said, it's not a big deal for me, to be honest. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, it's not a big deal for me anyway. It's just that I'm, oh. I'm just putting oh. it out. Honestly, they probably won't do it. The it's detail the upper most level even shrine. really The Kraken in the water nest on its lowest level, so you have to go instead down. You have got the wrong way, deep shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> While the fiend of water leaves, the light of the sea grows ever darker, whatever that means. Besides, honestly, the only people we have to worry about with censorship are Sony. Nintendo! Don't do censorship like well, Sony Well, like, like I said, uh, if the, there's a good chance that uh, the, the first place uh, this game receives a modern port, maybe Steam. So there is that. Not for nothing, uh, Java, but not for nothing, Java, But oh, I literally just pointed out. If it gets given to Steam, then they're definitely not gonna bother uh, trying to edit that stuff out. Not for nothing, Java, But I literally just pointed out how Final Fantasy VIII did the Sony thing. So it's not like Square is not above is, is, is above that. that. I remember hearing the most lovely chiming sound. What? That they covered that? Well, basically, a lot of the monsters had more. Um, revealing uh, uh, aspects to their design were covered like uh, basically uh, with Sylph you used to be you used to be able to see what is her fong uh, at least I think that's what it is uh, and they covered it with a, a skirt uh, on top of it basically so you don't see that uh, uh, and, and other stuff like that basically oh that uh, that's fine what they'll do with the mermaids is like basically sure they'll draw the they'll, they'll, they'll draw the shape of the breast just not put on the Erolia. I guess. More, more, well, not just that, Jova. It's, it's simply like make a, a pixel of a different color to show that they were a browser. Okay, well, now that here's literally the rule of breast censorship. 
You can show the breast. It's just don't show the, the naughty nipple. bit. The, yeah. yeah, literally the nipple is the only naughty bit that really gets censored. Everything else. Anyway, is game. congratulations, warrior! By exploring enough, you found the Rosetta Stone. Yeah. Leaves carry this on your back. Um, how heavy is it? Well, it's a, it's a giant stone tablet. Dwibs, you're a okay, master okay, now. Okay, okay, I am fed up with this disrespect you've been giving me. More proud this play for everyone. You're one of the stronger party this. members, though. Dwibs, in terms of physical strength. Negative example, you always, you always use me as it. Dwibs, do you want to, to want to get more damage onto you? I don't, do you? Not really, you're doing this onto yourself. It's not to me. You told me to. Look, I, it's oh, not like boy. I look. It's not like I can carry it. I have shit physical strength. You're the most physically strong of all of well, us. I'll carry. I'll carry it then, and you'll get more strength. Don't you even dare look at That's me. That's not I'm how my class you works. Guys this entire time in my pocket. So yes, it is. It's, it's it works like this in RPGs. You carry something heavy, you get more strength after it. Uh, hey, maybe in two, but this is Final Fantasy One. Dwibs, if we want to talk about carrying people, how about you take a turn carrying all of us? Like I'm carrying you. All right, guys. this is getting us nowhere. Let's speed up. <laughs> Hey, and hey, if, if hey, and hey, 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 two main, hey, if two Raider Angel of Darkness told me anything, is that I could, is that if I open a door, I could kick a box. <laughs> You're taking inspiration from Tomb Raider of Darkness. Twibs, just put the thing on your back and I'll carry you guys like I've been this entire venture. <laughs> okay, I might, really... I, I might not remember exactly how that went. But... Another thing that you may notice is that to particular the top floor was rich with diamond like equipment. So that means Jova just basically got uh, his armor complete overhaul. I have a quick question. Pretty much. Yes. How are we able to physically beat up whirlpools? Magic. Because magic. Magic. I mean, I Still, technically am... though. Magic. We're basically, we're basically a representation of the elements. You already fought a couple of them in both the Shirai. shrine and the uh, and the and the Gurgul volcano. Shirai. Basically, each dungeon has corresponding theme elements as of their common enemies. Oh, look. Shirai, we thanks to upgrades, we can now literally fight the elements. Shirai, five games from now, we're gonna be suplexing a fucking train. So, a moving train. A moving train. train. No, that's something you can actually like. Touch? I, yeah. <laughs> Don't you see Shiroi? I mean, a... Shiroi, Shiroi, you've seen Hercules. He managed to grab the thing by the base and actually yeet him in the space. Uh, okay, I'll give you that one. Don't you see Shiroi? We essentially ascended to godhood. That's how we're able to fight them. Well, don't get don't get your heads too much high, Drova. The godhood is reserved for various that last a, ve a very long time, and unfortunately, we do not have that luxury. Okay then, so like Hercules, we've just become true heroes then. Yeah, that's fair enough. So yes. Just, just, just be a glad we did not include. Just be glad we did not include the Tarasca. For a true hero is not measured by its physical strength, but 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 how, how much they grind. <laughs> and Lord knows we've ground a lot. There we go. And once again, I had to uh, kill them all. There you go. Well, again, for like I said, for this dungeon, Thunder Magic is best reserved, so use your Black Mage Rear's content. Thanks to my day grinding and you getting a lot of gear, you are able to also stack up on Ethers, because in these early games, you can also get Ethers very quickly. They are a bit costly, but as soon as you get a lot of money, they're not anymore a problem to get. Uh, meaning that, uh, you know, you can spam magic to your content uh, and then replenish in the middle of a dungeon. Anyway, we reached the, the Fiend of Water, so let's see. Mm. Oh, you, you are so impressive. Would not have thought you'd see you here. Well, we're here. What the? It's a giant squid. Hey, Kraken. Well, do you really think you can defeat the thin water here in our own way? Fools, these dark depths shall be your tomb. Wanna bet? Alright, the Kraken is not too hard. It does hit a bit harder and there's a nasty attack that inflicts blind, but once again, pump up your you know your thunder spell and you should be good to go. 
or she, right? Yeah, it also very like Blue hurts. Frost should should help you. Yeah, I didn't mention this. A couple of white magic spells that you can do are barriers against the elements, which means that allow you to um, to mitigate, not completely nullify the damage given by the corresponding elements. There's also a null everything spell, but it doesn't work on your entire party, just on one person at a time. And for later boss fights, you do not have the luxury of speed, so it's best to just cast the mass ones. See? The diamond equipment works. Yes, it does! This defense is amazing! Haste. There you go, Dwebs, now you're faster. So don't say I, don't help, oh, I didn't boy. help you. Basically, Dwebs has been... Thanks to the A spell, Dwebs can be transformed into Kenshiro, basically. Nice. The protagonist of Fist, dead, of, of Fist of the North Star, a.k.a. that yeah. uh, that animated feels like it was made by George Miller. It's still not that much, but you know, at least it's doing a bit so better. So it would be like American Mad Max, so oh, wait, that was gonna be the 2050 video game. That's just a thing, do it's like, um... Like, uh, that, that's one of the big dreams. Uh, one of the big dream adaptations. Uh, a Fist of the North Star live action movie directed by jo and written by George Miller. That's like the dream choice, if I've ever heard one. <laughs> yeah, but after... Yeah, that's an interesting thing. Yeah, the Mad Max video game... Was supposed to have um, was supposed to have a was supposed to have Max have an American accent, but when people complained, and even George Miller intervened, they recast the voice and just had to put on an Aussie. Well, accent. I, I can tell you this, Dweebs. Oh, we're going by punching straight into these very flashy beats. Uh, Dweebs manages to defeat the giant kraken. Congratulations. Good job, Dweebs. Yay. Thank you very much. Anyway, you were saying to you. I'll mention later. Alright, uh, by using the crystal of water in the corresponding twin, I guess, uh, it should be fine. <coughs> I know, Dwebs, the side of it is. So magical. Stunning. Yay, Jazz! Hang Okay, that's three out of four crystals. Yep, you're actually on a very good track. Nothing can stop us now. Uh, and once again, this unlocks the corresponding bonus dungeon. This is arguably the the hardest of a bunch, but all in due time. Oh boy. Alright, so let's... I think... Yeah, let, let's check back into town to see how things are going. I guess with this diamond armor, I can really see that diamonds are unbreakable. <laughs> Okay, first of all, let's let's go back into the inn to have you all healed. Might as well. Right. I mean, so you're right. literally drowning in heal. But anyway, let's to quickly finish. Um, since I played the game, I know the Mad Max video game actually has a bunch of uh, American voice actors like Josh Keaton and Robin Akindos, but they actually do pull up an Australian accent. Uh, so it posed on the crew. Uh huh. You know, I actually I just... don't actually don't remember who actually voices Max himself. Uh, gone, leaves. Uh, sorry, Pedro. You know, I just realized something. Um, uh, uh, these ends. We need to start telling these people uh, the ends to maybe try to give Shira her own room so she can have better privacy because this this should, this probably is a bit annoying. Anyway. What? By going back to Melmond, now that we have the, the Rosetta Stone, we can talk to the the the, the scholar that we have we have seen in an earlier part, and now we were recommended. Oh, there nice. we go. Just a moment. Let me see that tablet. This this is a Rosetta Stone. This makes it possible to decipher Luthanian. Yay. Mm, yes, of course, that's uh, what that was. It all makes sense. Here, allow me to express my gratitude by teaching you Lufilian like in the Matrix. Uh, how nice. There, now you can speak efficiently Lufilian too. Alright, I'll, 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 I'll... If only learning a foreign language was this easy. Allow me. Guys. I did. I know kung fu. Guys, I yes. just learned the entire Lufinian language. No, 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 no,
the actual city of Lufinia is situated uh, very, very, go, very far here. Unfortunately, you have to park your airship once again in that space and reach it by foot. Uh, go on, Pedro. But yeah, uh, sorry, Shira, but it seems these innkeepers in this game are very devoid of tact. When it comes very, very old school. Honestly, nothing wrong with four friends sharing a room. We're literally just sleeping in separate beds anyway, as it is. There is a plot in an early part of that game. There is a, there is a plot point in Final Fantasy V regarding fairies. Uh, in an evening, <laughs> uh. There is that. Uh. Yeah, we'll get to that when we get to that. But I think Obviously. that's the only mention of the subject uh, in that regard. And to be fair, that has to do with a little secret regarding fairies. Ha, yeah. of a stick. Which reminds me, I still got dibs on voicing Paris. Sure. Because pirates. <sighs> Just gotta continue this long trek. Just think of it as proper, proper trading warriors. Uh, not to mention, the monsters of the Lufinian area are weaker compared to the one of the Sunken Shrine. So this is pretty much a, a walk in the park. But of course. After all, we've had the proper training. Yep. Again, the peninsula power level actually does its job. My cape shows that I've earned the virtue. Sure, but uh, can you actually learn the power of destrucity? Well, I hear that that requires studying a very, 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 that very ancient dialect that is incomprehensible to most human beings. Like, how about everybody except one? And the one person that for which it was understandable is is no longer among us anyway, so that language is now forever lost to mankind, it seems. <laughs> what a shame. The world may never know. You can try comprehending it, but I warn you, it may just leave you raving mad. Mm-hmm. Also, wow. apparently the Lufinian city has an infestation of minotaur zombies and trolls roaming around and around. No wonder no one gets out of town. Alright, uh, hey. hey, Shiro, let's ditch these guys, come on. No. Nope. Uh, uh, <laughs> who's going to run none of this time, you Unfortunately, guys? the running is tied sort of to the speed of your character and your wizards are not exactly, you know, the flash. So you uh, guys are the literally hell? the slow pokes. Uh, well, yeah, our roads are so long, if we start running, we're just gonna fall anyway. Uh, gee, what the hell kind of fanfics are you coming up with me? Anyway, here we go. We are the Lufinians, the descendants of a race that once lived among the clouds, the sky people. You use a vessel you call an airship. Yes. It was built by one of our ancestors, a man by the name of Sid. This is a retcon because Sid was not invented as a recurring character by the time um, but in later years of Final Fantasy 1, they just retroactively inserted him and were like, oh, why the fuck not? This well. is the power of the remake. Mm -hmm. But here's the more interesting thing. This is a thing that these updated re-release has toned down. But basically what all this dialogue implies is that uh, before the things arrived, uh, there were modern civilizations, including the Lufinian one, and the things that they had were more like sci-fi technology, including a space station, you know. Um, but later releases toned down by saying that it's a sky fortress or something. But uh, um, but basically, the the concept of uh, Final Fantasy implementing sci-fi into its fantasy um, settings is as old as the first game, technically. Mm. Flying Castle floats on a blue sea of stars beyond the sky. See? Like that. This world is composed by four forces, fire, earth, water, and wind. Of these, we show greatest powers with the power of wind. High in the sky, we set a castle afloat that meets an azure what sea about the of power stars. Of, what about a the castle in the sky, you say? What about Who's the power the of heart? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Uh, well, it, 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 it's well. That's a thing, Jove. Um, the original Final Fantasy came out in 1987, only a year after Castle in the Sky premiered in Japan. So maybe, maybe. But at the same time, maybe not, because for all we know, maybe it was uh, it could have been a coincidence. It, we came it, to believe it was another entity controlling the four fiends. Uh, mm. A man behind the man. To a certain its location, we sent out five warriors, but much time has passed since we heard from them. Oh. I hope no harm is before. Five Lufinian warriors, keep that in mind. Let me guess, you want us to go look for them? 
We placed our last hope in the five warriors we sent out. It's been said but we fell victim to the curse of the fiends and we're turning to bats. Oh, wait a minute! <laughs> we fought a life and death struggle with Tiamat, the fiend of wind. But our power was not enough. To this day, our lair remains in the castle in the sky, the flying fortress. Ah, that's nice. There were equal opportunity with the villain. Oh, it's Clearly, awesome. legendary warriors, take this charm with you. We'll grant you passage into the Mirage Tower. Yay! Basically, now you need the two items to actually get into the Flying Fortress. This chime, given by the Rufinians, and the Warp Cube that you already got, that we already got thanks to that robot to behind the waterfall. So we were, for, for the together. next part, we are good to go to actually go to the Sky Fortress. Okay, then. Um, what am I doing? Oh, okay. First, let's uh, have a. Oh, nice there you go. I was checking. I was checking out. Basically, you have a secret shop here that sells you the most powerful spells here: full life for the white mage, and for the black mage, flare, which in the original game was called Nuk. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Now, in the next part, you will have to traverse an entire. Mirage Tower to reach in the upper sky, the Sky Fortress. See ya. See ya. And off we go. Yeah.